Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, Honourable Members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to meet for the first time uh, with this recently constituted committee to present Chapter 6 of our 2018 annual report relating to MFF subheading 1B and covers economic, social and territorial cohesion covering expenditure managed by DG's Regio and employment. To benefit from the new control and assurance framework, for the 1420 period and ultimately to make increased use of the available regularity information and to reduce the administrative burden on final beneficiaries. We have maintained the same approach in 2018 as was the case for 2017. This new framework provides that member states audit authorities certify that the residual error rate per operational program is below 2%. And then the Commission subsequently accepts in an annual closure procedure the expenditure and concludes on the reported error rates. The objective of our audit was twofold, namely to contribute to our overall statement of assurance and also to assess the new control and assurance framework and the extent to which it can be relied upon. So for the first objective, for this year's Statement of Assurance Audit and Cohesion, we examined a representative sample of 220 transactions, of which 151 concerned DG Regio. All of other figures quoted hereafter refer to the other population covering both DGs. Our testing consisted of transactions which the Member States <coughs> Audit Authorities had previously checked and involved a review of their checklists and the evidence that they had to substantiate the results of their audit work and opinions. We identified and quantified 36 errors which had not been detected by the audit authorities. Taking account of the 60 errors previously found by the audit authorities and Member States' corrections worth a total of 314 million euros, covering both programming periods, we estimate the level of error for MFF subheading 1B to be 5% compared to the 3% last year and 4.8% the year before. To this end, I would like to recall that last year I had highlighted on several occasions that 2017 was in fact an unusual year. A limited number, that is 17, member states had submitted a low level of expenditure and the proportion of ERDF cohesion fund expenditure which by its nature is more complex was lower than usual. This year ineligible expenditure followed by infringement of internal market rules contributed most to our estimated level of error. This level of error is impacted by a higher share of ERDF CF expenditure compared to last year which usually involves procurement procedures and state aid cases as well as EU and national rules that remain complex. We note that the Commission has proposed 80 simplification <coughs> measures for consideration in the CPR for 2021-27 MFF. The second <coughs> objective of our 2018 audit was to assess the new control and assurance framework for 1420 covering the audit activities of Member States and the Commission. If we start with the work of the Member States Audit Authorities, we assess the work of 15 out of 126 Audit Authorities. We continue to find that Audit Authorities have issued clean opinions on regularity, that is, they have certified a residual error rate below 2%, whereas we found some to be above this materiality threshold. In fact, this was the case for eight of the 15 assurance packages for 14 and 20, and one of the nine closure packages for 713 included in their sample. DG Regio has also identified similar problems in its annual activity report, whereby 64% of the OPs that they considered at risk and audited on the spot were found, found to have er erroneously reported an underestimated error rate, whereas they were actually above 2%. We also found a number of weaknesses concerning the work carried out by other authorities. These concern mainly their sampling, and despite improvements, there are still issues with the scope, quality, and documentation of their work. 
Because of these issues, we had to re-perform 64 transactions, including 48 on-the-spot visits at beneficiary level. While this shows an improvement compared to the previous years, it still necessitated extra resources on the part of the Court of Auditors and resulted in an additional burden for some beneficiaries. In terms of the work of the Commission, the results of the Commission's work are the basis for establishing the estimated errors reported and the related reservations made in DG Regio's annual activity report. We reviewed the error rate for the 2016-2017 accounting year, the so-called KPI-5, for which the underlying expenditure has already been subject to the new control procedure. This error was not yet final when the AAR was published in June 2019 as possible corrective actions for 40 out of 175 OPs were still ongoing, and in fact it represents a minimum error rate due to the Commission's methodology. Another important error rate is the risk gap payment, which follows the financial regulation's annuality principle and relates to relevant cohesion expenditure in 2018. As this expenditure has not yet been subject to the new control cycle at the time of the publication of the AAR, the risk of payment is in fact a projection, which is still subject to future verification and potential corrections. Therefore, if in, if our overall assessment is that, in view of the shortcomings of the new control and assurance framework outlined, we cannot currently rely on the work of the Member States' audit authorities or on the error rates presented in DG Regio's annual activity report. We have made three recommendations that aim to improve this situation going forward, which the Commission has accepted, and we also refer to recommendations that we made last year which concern recurring issues. Dear Members, while it is crucial to spend EU funds in compliance with the rules, it is vitally important in view of the scarce budgetary resources that there is a positive impact in terms of objectives and results achieved. In that context, we assessed in a separate section of Chapter 6 elements of the Member States' performance system. We found that Member States have monitoring systems to record information on performance, but in a number of cases, the authorities had not set result or output indicators at project level, and in a few cases, no indicators or targets had been set at all. Furthermore, we noted that completed projects have not always fully achieved their performance objectives. To conclude, I hope that our findings, conclusions and recommendations are of value for the work of this committee and of the Commission in relation to cohesion. The importance of this policy area is reflected by the fact that the Court has issued 12, 13 special reports and six reviews in this policy area in 2018 and 19 to date. Our published opinion 6 of 2018 provides our views on the proposal for a common provision regulation governing MFF 21-27. Let me finish my pr presentation by stressing that the errors we identify are due to the non-compliance with the relevant rules and conditions and, not, not, and are not necessarily wasted funds as the project may still have achieved its objectives and could have had a positive impact. It must be emphasised that fraud is different from an error as it implies a deliberate act of deception to gain an advantage in obtaining EU funds. The court referred nine cases of suspected fraud to OLAF of which only one concerned a cohesion transaction from 2017. I would like to thank the rapporteur, Mr. Ms. Holmeyer, for the very useful exchange of views in relation to discharge procedure, and unfortunately she cannot attend today, and also the Commission for the constructive working relationship throughout the process, which is not always easy considering we operate in a complex policy area which often requires professional judgment. I now look forward to the words of Commissioner Hahn and then to any questions that the Honour members may have. Thank you.